Revelation chapter 4, beginning from verse 2. Immediately I was in the spirit. Behold, a throne set in heaven, and one. Now that one, that one was not originally there, but there is one because it's fitting that it is put there because in the book of Ezekiel chapter 1 where it was mentioned it was put there one sat upon the throne and he who sat there was like a jasper a sardial stone in appearance and there was a rainbow around the throne in appearance like an emerald around the throne were 24 thrones and on the thrones I saw twenty-four elders sitting, clothed in white robes, and they had crowns of gold on their heads. And from the thrones proceeded lightnings, thunderings, and voices. Seven lamps of fire were burning before the throne, which are the seven spirits of God. This is the way the throne looks like. So I want us to worship God with the weight of the throne. He that sat upon the throne is like Jasper. You are safe if you imagine he that sits upon the throne like Jasper. White, bright. I think Jasper is the color. What's the color of Jasper? I think the, the way it is portrayed is like it's, it's whitish. Southern is like reddish. If I get it right. And from the throne proceeded lightnings, thunderings, and voices. Seven lamps of fire were burning before the throne, which are the seven spirits of God. Before the throne, there was a sea of glass, a crystal, and in the midst of the throne and around the throne, and were four living creatures full of eyes. All around the throne and within the throne were, were four living creatures full of eyes. In front and in back. The first living creature like a lion was like a lion. The second living creature like a calf. It's the third living creature like a face, a face like a man. And the fourth living creature was like a flying eagle. The four living creatures, each having six wings, were full of eyes around and within. And they do not rest day or night, saying, Holy, holy, Lord God Almighty who was and is and is to come. Whenever the living creatures gave glory and honor and thanks to him who sits on the throne, who lives forever and ever, the 24 elders fell before, before him, who lives forever and ever, and cast their crowns before the throne, saying, You are worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power, for you created all things, and by your will they exist and were created. Come rise up on that and take a song and look to the face of the Lord. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of Oh, see 
sitting upon the throne and all the things that are mentioned there around the throne. Oh, we start it again. Okay. With his glory, the Lord is filled with his glory.
I just perceive that Mark eleven twenty two is what God is speaking to somebody this morning, and um, the Lord wants to take it as a word from the throne to Him, from Him to yourself to operate the grace of God, the strength of God, and the might of God. For the glory of God to appear and to show forth in our lives, it's always according to His proceeding word. Hallelujah. Amen. The proceeding word of God is a transmitter of God's glory. That's why we need to understand what He's saying per time to us. Hallelujah. Now there was an issue which happened when the Lord Jesus Christ was traveling. And um, on his journey, um, he saw a fig tree. Can we open to Mark 11? Hallelujah. He saw a fig tree and he wanted to take out of it to eat. Praise God. He saw a fig tree and he wanted to take out of it to eat. And... Um, Because it had so much leaves. So, uh, people who are critics of, script, of scripture say, okay, if Jesus was God, how comes he had to wait to get to the fig tree to know that the fig tree did not have fruits on them? Now, he saw a fig tree and wanted to take out of the fruits. 
So they base their argument on the fact that Jesus had to get there before he knew that there was no fruit in it. God should know everything, shouldn't he? But Jesus Christ was to fulfill the will of God in all his humanity. He was not just human to be human, but he was human to fulfill the will of God in his humanity. God could have withdrawn the ability to know that at the time when he saw the fig tree. God used the lives of Jesus. God used his body for everything he wanted to use it for. Use his voice for everything he used it for. So he could use his understanding, he could use his knowledge for whatever he wanted to use it for. Anyway, that's another day for, I mean, that's another topic, another day for those who critique the word of God and who think the word of God is untrue and who, who do not believe in the divinity of Jesus Christ. And um, this generation is actually drawing close to that, to that place where um, they are believing in the word of God, in the veracity of the word is not sacrosanct. They do not believe in the infallibility of scripture. That's why somebody can be doubting whether um, the, about the operations of the spirit. You know, there, I, I heard that a preacher, I, I don't fancy the preacher really, but I heard that he talked about the case of a man who um, was teleported, who was in, the, I think in Kenya, from Kenya, in an airport in Kenya. He found, when he was coming out, he found himself in an airport in uh, Paris and uh, all that. I think Paris, yeah. Now, I think he just said that recently. But that thing had been on for a long time. I think I saw it first on Sidroth. That was about five years ago. Sometimes I overblot the number of years, but it's been a very long time. So, uh, so well. So, so, so when people don't believe in the fact that scriptures can be true, my wife was sharing about this with me, and he said, if believers were, if the, it was the believers of today that had to establish the truth of scripture relating to um, relating to the virginity of Jesus Christ, that they would contest it because they would say it was unnatural and impossible. If we have to be a people of faith, if we have to believe it, what brought Christianity in the first place? Why you are a believer? What brought you into the Christ life is faith. And that faith is not any weaker than the faith with which God operated all that he had operated because it was the faith of God, the faith of Christ. It was not your own faith. Hallelujah. It was a dashed faith. Hallelujah. You believed Because as you heard the word, the word transmitted faith into you, not because you saw. Now, so a lot of people don't believe a lot of things that are in scripture today, even though they are believers. They are meant to be believers. Now, so Jesus Christ was um, entering into Jerusalem, and he was going on his way there, and uh, he saw a fig tree, and um, he wanted to take, he thought, oh, this fig tree has so much leaves, he wanted to go there to take from it. And um, when he got there, he saw that there was no fruit there on it, and then he cursed the fig tree. And when he cursed the fig tree, Nothing happened. It didn't look like anything had happened. It didn't look like anything was at taking place at all. Hallelujah. It didn't look like anything had taking place at all. But see verse 12 of Matthew of Mark 11. Now the next day when they had come out from Bethany, he was hungry and um, seemed Seeing from afar a fig tree having leaves, he went to see it, if perhaps he would find something on it. And when he came to it, he found nothing 
but leaves, for it was not the season for figs. In response, Jesus said to the tree, to it, let no one eat fruit from you ever again. Hallelujah. The Bible says, the King James Version says, and Jesus answered and said unto it. <laughs> Praise God. There are situations which we need to answer. Any situation where you are expecting fruit and you don't see fruit, he's speaking something to you. He's speaking hopelessness. He's speaking futility. He's speaking vanity. He's saying that what the Lord has ordained for you cannot take place, cannot find expression. Hallelujah. So that's why Jesus answered and said unto it. I like the way the King James Version said it. Jesus answered and said unto it. That's why when you're looking for literariness, when you're looking for vivaciousness, when you are looking for life, a lot of times the King James Version of the Bible brings words into life. I understand that it's an older English, but even though it's an older English, it still brings a lot of things to life. See, see, and Jesus speak and answered it. Jesus answered it. <laughs> but we were not told when the fig tree spoke to Jesus. But the fact that Jesus couldn't get any fruit was a speaking. Is there anything in your life that you, you, you are looking at it and there's no fruit coming? The Bible says he created all things. Hallelujah. Amen. Mm-hmm. <laughs> by faith we understand that you know he created the world through his word although that word I'm um, talking about eons but we know even apart from eons Genesis chapter 1 to the last verse tells us how that God created all things by speaking the word praise God so he created all things and he wanted to get something from the thing he had created it's possible that one may have had um, certain projects certain things you're doing certain works you're doing Children that you have, pursuits that you have that are, that is in God. You know, Scripture says in the world you will have what tribulation. So a lot of believers are surprised. We are surprised when we when we meet opposition on our ways, when we meet opposition concerning things that we think God said. Praise God. And then do you know that even we that are spiritual. Even those who are growing to become full matured sons, sometimes, even when we hear things, when we see things that are, that look opposing, sometimes you want to shake and say, ah, what's going on? Didn't God say this? As if we have forgotten that even if God has said it, there is still something that will bring God's word to pass necessarily. Hallelujah. So, the fig tree spoke. I like this translation also. He says, in response, Jesus said to it. In other words, the act and the fact that he did not see fruit on that fig tree was speech to Christ. Was speaking to Jesus. So Jesus Christ said, nobody will eat fruit from it anymore. Now, that was judgment, but what we are, we're, we're bringing a principle out. We are not bringing judgment out of it. Incidentally, one of the things I was, that was rolling in my spirit was that I, I should continue to speaking about God still remains a judge today. But I feel I was not prepared enough for it. Even though last week I didn't prepare for it when the Lord spoke to me to, to start it. But this week I felt I'm not prepared. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> Hallelujah. So it was judgment that the Lord spoke to the tree. The Lord spoke judgment. And so in the nations also, the Lord is going to be speaking judgment. And the time of his judgment has come to the nations. And people don't know about this. <laughs> people don't know. People don't think this is true. People don't think this is real. People don't think this is going to be according to what God said it will be. Anyway, but let's go on. Now, so he said... Let no one eat fruit from you ever again. The Bible, the, let, can we read the last part together? Can we read the last part together? Want, are you looking into your Bibles? Is everybody looking into their Bibles? Yes, you read it, read it with me. And his disciples heard it. Hallelujah. 
Very important. And his disciples heard it. So those who were with him heard what he said. His disciples heard it. All right. So Jesus proceeded on his way. Now, but nothing happened to the tree. Did, well, did we hear that anything happened to the tree? No, we didn't hear that. Well, the only thing we heard was the word that was spoken to the tree. All right. So Jesus proceeded on his journey, cleansed the temp temple when he entered into Jerusalem, overturned the, money, uh, the tables of the money changers and all of that, and he did a lot of exploits in that place for the name of the Lord. And um, now, in the morning, as they passed by, they saw the fig tree dried up from the roots. Hallelujah. Amen. They saw the fig tree dried up from the roots. Now, it was not just that the fig tree dried. They say it dried up from the roots. You know, when something dries out from the roots, it's a fig tree. That is a big tree. You know, so the the root had come out from the ground dry. It had it was like there's a mini drought around the area where the tree was planted. So the thing, you know, when you the way you see some mango big trees that their roots are out. They are the roots are like trees themselves. The thing had dried out. So, now in the morning, okay, and Peter remember, remembering said to him, Rabbi, look, the fig tree which you caused has withered away. Which you caused has withered away. If Jesus had blessed the fig tree, if Jesus said, fig tree, you need to be fruiting. From now on, you shall start fruiting. It's possible that when they were coming back, you will have seen fruits there. <laughs> Praise God. Because even when you kill a tree, you know how to kill trees. How do you kill trees? You kill trees by setting fire to the roots. It takes time. You can't take... The, the whole thing that happened was not more than 15 hours to between 15 hours and 24 hours. It will take time for it to die. For you to even begin to feel it, because it's a, it's a tree. It's not a tomato plant. It's not a corn. It's not maize plant that will start to wither within some three, four hours. The tree. But the tree was withering from the root less than 24 hours later. Now it says, so Jesus answered, said, the, the fig tree, master, rabbi, teacher. The word rabbi is the word teacher, means the word teacher. The fig tree which you caused has withered away. Nobody can use it anymore. So Jesus answered and said to him, have faith in God. Hallelujah. Amen. Okay, have faith in God for Assuredly, I say to you, for verily I say unto you, for verily, verily I say unto you. Bible scholars have said that anytime Jesus Christ said verily, verily, he raised up his hand as if he was swearing. It was a swear word. Not of a swear word of the F word or no, not that kind of swear. It was a word of swearing, a word of oath, a word of attestation to the veracity of divine principle. And truth. So Jesus lifted up his hand and said, Verily, verily, I say unto you. Who was speaking? Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. I say unto you. I am the one telling you. You are not reading this from a textbook. I say unto you. I demonstrated it to you, but I'm bringing the, the principle of that demonstration. Verily, verily, I say unto you, have faith in God, for verily, 
Verily I say to you, whosoever shall say to this mountain, was it a mountain that Jesus addressed? Was it a mountain that Jesus addressed? No. So it was a tree. So why was Jesus translating that thing to a mountain? He's saying that, yes, he didn't say, he could have said, very, very, I say unto you, whosoever shall say to this tree, he could have used the same principle that he, I mean, this, the exact thing that he said. Very, very, I say unto you, whosoever shall say to this tree, be thou dried off from the roots, he shall have whatsoever he said. Say, to this mountain. In other words, he transferred that principle from the exact thing that he used it for and brought it, made it wider and broader. I made it such that it could apply. It's telling us that it could apply to anything that looks like a difficulty to us. Because mountains always, a lot of times, because of the nature of mountains, there is difficulty to them. Hallelujah. Because a mountain suddenly shifts the goalposts. A mountain suddenly adjusts the constitution without announcing. You have been going on a plane and then all of a sudden you see a mountain and you know that for you to continue on your journey, you have to do two things. It's either you go around the mountain and to continue straight or you climb the mountain and Jesus Christ is now telling us that there is another way to deal with the mountain. Hallelujah. Amen. As okay, there are I've seen several roads constructed in Abuja since I came in. We came in 20, 2008, about 12 years now. And um some of the express roads that were done were one lane. Back in those days, 2008 to 2012, when they began to do a major major reconstructions on that road. I think they began to do it, uh, yeah, anyway, forget about that date. Now, there used to be so much traffic congestion on that road. So much. So when they began to reconstruct, there was a mountain like this, um, the Kubwa Expressway to town, you know. There, was a, there were several rocky high places there, mountains. Today I look at them and they have been they have been shriveled down. They they, they have been blasted off and the road had been constructed in their place. Where those mountains stood have become roads. Hallelujah. Amen. So that's a picture of what Jesus was trying to say. The natural thing for man that faces a mountain, for a man that faces a mountain, that suddenly encounters difficulties, suddenly had to face new challenges. You are working on a plane for heaven's sake. You are targeted your, the number of minutes that you're going to spend on your way to where you're going. Um, on your school, the, 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 the grade you're going to get in your business, you know, the, the grades you are going to make in your marriage, the children you're going to have, and all of a sudden, marriage is done, and we're looking for children. What's going on here? That's a mountain. He said you have to do more. He's speaking something to you. He's telling you that something, you're, 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 you're thinking, oh, I, um, when I'm 80, when I'm 70, I'll be this. When I'm 80, I'll do this. When I'm 90, I'll do this. All of a sudden, before you even got near it, near those ages, sickness is threatening, and he's saying, you're going to die. That's what it's telling you. <laughs> That's a mountain. Changes the whole thing. Changes the whole thing. I was traveling many years back and all of a sudden, a mountain showed up. An accident was threatening to happen. And it did happen. And the vehicle was rolling and moving and rolling. Just like that, it rolled about four or five times before it stopped. That's a mountain. It changes the landscape. It makes 
It changes the tune of the song. It's requiring more from you. That's a mountain. So Jesus removed, Jesus did not limit it to the tree. He didn't say, Verily I say unto you, you see what I did to that tree. If anybody can do it to that same tree. No, he removed it from that, he, 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 he removed it from the negative and brought it into the positive. Because what he did, what he said to that tree was that you are not going, nobody's going to eat from you. Kill the tree. Hallelujah. Amen. But he's saying, when mountain faces you, you can take the mountain away. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And so man normally, when we look at mountains, we, we have two options, depending on your strength. You either want to go around the mountain and continue your journey, or go across the mountain and come down the other side, climb from this side and come down the other side and continue. But Jesus Christ gave a new one. And he said, you can blast the mountain with your words. <laughs> if I, okay, human beings de 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 developed another way they could blast the mountain. But Jesus even did it a, be a better, the fourth way. Because he's the fourth man anyway. The fourth way. And what did Jesus Christ say? He said, you can tell the mountain to go. He has ears to hear. Hallelujah. Amen. You can take the mountain away by your word. You don't even need to do all the wahala of uh, the trouble. You don't need to take the trouble to blast the mountain. To be looking for dynamite. You don't need to take all that trouble. You can tell the mountain, move, and it will move. That's what Jesus says. Now, how do you have faith in God? For verily I say to you, whosoever shall say to this mountain. Now, he said, whosoever shall say to what? This mountain. Not all mountains. Not God, take all my troubles away. Lord, all, every one of my troubles, please take them away. All my troubles. Mm -mm. This mountain. This mountain. This mountain. This mountain. A specific mountain needs a specific word. Whosoever shall say to this mountain, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea. Then you are telling the mountain even where to go. Why must the mountain be cast into the sea? Because the sea is so deep that by the, by the time the mountain gets into the sea, nobody will, he will swallow it up. The sea is also used as a language of forgetfulness. Hallelujah. That when you want to forget anything, you throw it into the sea. Like now, you, the, you, you are living by the sea coast. And uh, your, your brother took your, your, the, the key to your house and threw it into the sea. You now say you are looking for it. Is anybody that will be looking for it? Or you are fighting with your brother. And, uh, and you are living in Lagos. So you just bought a new car. And then the guy drove into the through the uh, uh, to the bar beach, and went very well into the sea until the thing got here, and then he threw the key into the sea. When you have confirmed that he was actually mad enough to throw the key into the sea, what will you be doing? You'll be looking for the manufacturers of the car. How you will get another key? Because as for that key, it is gone. It's gone. <laughs> it's gone. That key cannot be found again. You don't look for it. If you find it by any means, it is like it is the uh, odds. You know, they call something odds. The odds to finding is like a million, a billion to one to finding that key. Praise God. I know somebody can say, okay, divers can go there and go and look for it. They can't find it. Me, I can tell you that that key, they can't find it. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> They can't find it through a key to the sea. So he said, that mountain, you have the right to also tell it where to go. What kind of person is this? What kind of life is this? This is a, a different type of lifestyle. Are you getting what I'm saying? It's a diff Jesus is introducing us to a different kind of lifestyle. It's a life that is unnatural. Where you tell mountains what to do. What kind of man tells mountains what to do? You tell difficulties what to do. The reason they came is because they know they can kill you. 
The reason that sickness came is because they know he knows that surely he has killed so many people and he has come and the doctors have told you that this, this sickness that has come now, you can only manage it. There's nothing you can do against it. It will kill you. And you can feel the pain. But Jesus said you can tell the mountain. When you come to Jesus, Jesus will now will not say what the doctors are saying. Jesus will give you this kind of principle. Verily, verily, I say unto you, whosoever shall say to this sickness, this one, this one, mentioning its name, whosoever shall say to this one, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that what is soever he says shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he say. There's a load to that. Now, we can need to back up a little bit. Bible scholars, uh, sorry, the, uh, uh, um, the beloved Reverend, uh, Reverend Egan, said, when the scripture says, have faith in God, the scripture is actually say, I mean, that word means, have the faith of God. Hey! The faith of God. Have the faith of God. In other words, if you dissect God today, they say God has faith. If you dissect God today and you bring his faith out from wherever it is in his body, and you check that faith, it is exactly this faith that Jesus used here. The same one. You see? Then he said, if we can use it, it will work for us the way it worked for Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. He, because the Lord was swearing to them, he said, I say to you, have the faith of God. And in another way, have the God kind of faith. The God kind of faith. The faith that is like God's faith. The exact kind of faith that God has. That is the faith that it takes to walk out of the ordinary. There is a way, there is a God kind of life. That's what we have embraced. You can't use the God kind of life using the normal human hope faith. Chance hope faith. The normal human faith is very, is very weak. It's just hoping that per adventure, all things being equal, in other words, the normal human kind of faith, if this is this and this is this and this is this and this is this, this I, I hope say, that, that kind of faith, if they catch it, if they catch you with it, it shows and demonstrates that you are not living the kingdom lifestyle. The kingdom lifestyle is a, is a lifestyle that uses the God kind of faith. And how does it deplore the God kind of faith? Does it take cutlass and begin to chisel off the mountain? No. Does it take, um, what does it use? It uses words. So, you know, a lot of people don't value words. Say, ah, it's not the only word. It's not only word. It's only word I say now. You know, it's like somebody that, you know, I, I, like I, even though it happens to me this way, but I, I also, I, I, I agree with the, uh, the, the, uh, the, the opposition of people that don't think that way. This is what I would say. So, somebody, um, so you call somebody to come do something in your house. In your car, maybe your electricity went bad in the house and all that, and everybody have tried whatever they wanted to do. Many years ago, I heard that kind of story, and it happens every time. It happens every time. Now, this guy comes, and he just says, ah, ah, ah. Sometimes they may not even talk, ah. They just put one wire with one wire, and then connect everything and say, okay, please put it on. Put that light on. And put it on. And then, ah. And everybody wonders, what's going on here? The whole place is well lit. Why? 
Because that person knows how to do it. Hallelujah. There is a way to do things. He said that thou mayest know how to behave thyself in the church of God, which is in the ecclesia of God, which is the pillar and the ground of truth. There is a way of living. If we, if the, if this world catch us with natural human faith of hope and just be thinking it may happen by any chance, by chance, if they catch us, we will see Wahala. We can't afford it. Hallelujah. Did you hear what I said? You can't afford it. We can't afford to live natural human life by hoping that things will be better. That's not, that's not God's faith. Jesus was so specific. When you are specific, that's when it shows you know what you're talking about. Why I gave that other example was that, yes, the guy did it in a jiffy. What you have been trying to do for three hours, you have been suffering for it, for it or maybe three days. Say, why is this light like this? Why is this like this? The guy just comes and just does it because he knows how to do it. And sometimes we just think, ah, he just, you know, we want to pay them, you want to pay them small because, I mean, a small amount of money, little amount of money, because you felt, ah, they didn't do much now. And then, so instead of, you, you have thought that the thing would cost 5000 so, because they just did it within two minutes and it worked, you offer them one thousand. Say, oh God, oh God, no, ah, you just did this, 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 something small. You just did something small. Why should I give you five thousand? You just did something small. Now, that's the same way we regard words. We think words are nothing, but words are things. Hallelujah. Amen. Words are things. Jesus Christ said, he said, he said, if whoever, there are specificities in this place, whoever, that establishes that you, if, it find, if you are found in that situation, whoever, then whoever shall say, hallelujah, to this mountain, shall Say to this mountain. So this whoever is now specific. I have taken the challenge up and I'm saying a specific thing to a mountain. This the mountain has name. What's the name of the mountain? Hallelujah. What's the name of the mountain? There was one time ago. There was somebody I was I I I am in the habit of um, when anybody has issues with sickness and disease. I just plan a period of time and I say, let's just keep speaking about against it and let's speak healing into your body. So if you are hearing me today and you have anything that has to do with illness in your body, you, you, can, you can contact me if you are hearing me online. You can have time and we speak against it and we speak God's health into your body. So now, one of those days as we were speaking, as you were speaking, you don't know, this usually happens to me. As you were speaking, because it was something that was said to be, whether life threat, I mean, yeah, life threatening, they needed to do an operation, you know, and all that. And I, it was as if I went into her body and I saw things and I spoke and, you know, the operations of God began to take place. You know, I, I was, I was like, I went to that person's body and I brought things out and I, I saw that thing and I, 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 I fought against it. When I say I, the forces of God, I saw it. But it, when it came to words. The person had the operation and they removed the thing and they said it was not malignant. But they say it was malignant before. Praise God. <laughs> was not malignant. They said they had to remove it because they were not sure. Hallelujah. Amen. And I've had so much of those kinds of things. By speaking, most of our inheritances are given to us by speaking. Whosoever shall say to this mountain, this particular mountain, and shall not doubt in his heart. Where is your heart? It is a place of your believing. Your heart is different from your head. Hallelujah. 
it is very possible that your head feels one way and your heart feels another way. Hallelujah. Has it happened to you before? Praise God. Has it happened to you before? God is telling you to do something. You know it may uh, inconvenience you. So your head is telling you don't do it. Your heart is saying do it. Huh? Okay, so heart. Your heart is strong in faith, but your head can be saying, ah, you don't die. This thing can never change. Ah, and then people will be coming and be telling you how that this was what this was what happened to this person. This thing happened to that person. This was what, how they solved it. And they give you all manner and types of solutions that are different from that of the faith of God. Say, have the faith of God. The God that if you go and check God's faith and you check the DNA of God's faith, it is the same faith that he's using. Okay, what makes God's faith now more powerful in his mouth than ours? Because he has been using it for a long time. You just started to use your own. So it may take time. Did you get that? That's the difference between the timing. The one Jesus said took about between 15 to 24 hours before they started seeing it. If Jesus was in all his glory, it would happen that same minute. <laughs> Hallelujah. Did you get that? It would happen when? That same minute. When he did it concerning healing and health, those people were healed instantly. Miracles were taking place. Have the God kind of faith. Whosoever shall say to this mountain, be thou removed, be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in their heart, but shall believe. So doubting in your heart is not the same thing as doubting in your head. Sometimes you may doubt in your head. Doubt may arise in your head. Different kinds of imaginations may come forth in your head. Imagination that says, ah, it cannot happen. Or it's going to happen negatively. But you believe God. You say, I believe God. I believe God. I believe God. That's the way it works. Now, what is happening at that time is that your mind is just getting used to operating in this way. Sometimes, even if you have been operating for 20 years in this faith, sometimes your mind may still get to some challenges that it will feel like, ah, it will never happen, it will never happen, or it will happen in a negative way, it will happen in a negative way. But you see, what's going on is that your heart, the culture of heaven, is bringing your mind into captivity to himself. There is a culture of heaven. Faith is the culture of heaven. It, giving up is not the culture of heaven. Hallelujah. Fear is not the culture of heaven. Jesus Christ said the heart of men will fail them because of the of just even observing the things that are coming that will take place. So fear is not the culture of heaven. It's not the culture of the kingdom. Praise God. Jesus taught the, cult, the, the, the culture of the, of the kingdom and then he demonstrated the power of that culture. So we are sons of the kingdom. Praise God. Hallelujah. And as sons of the kingdom, we should live with the, a life that is consistent with our civilization. Because we are sons of a different kind of civilization. The civilization of heaven. The culture of heaven. So the faith of God is the culture of heaven. So whosoever shall say to this mountain, be thou removed a particular thing. Stop your track. Sickness. Mention the name of the sickness. In the name of Jesus, himself took my infirmities and bore my diseases by his stripes have been healed. Situations that are difficult and tough, that look like it can never be resolved. In the name of Jesus, I remove the hand of the enemy from this area, from this area, from this area, in the name of Jesus. I command that the doors be open. Hallelujah. Amen. Command, give that command. Jesus Christ said, You should say it. That's the way it works with God. God has no other way in which it works if you must. When it comes to operating by yourself, kingdom, kingdom culture, operating kingdom culture by yourself. I know there's a time, I mean, there's a situation where somebody can lay hands 
on you and you're, you're healed. Somebody can do this and you are healed. Somebody can do that and you are. But there is the kingdom culture where you are taught to make things happen. It works by faith. How is that faith developed? That faith is developed by looking into the word of God and being intimate with him. Hallelujah. You see, because faith comes by the preceding word. Faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. It is not, you see, this is the word of God. Yes, we can go into the word of God, written, the logos of God, written, and then we can get things from there. But there is the proceeding word. How do we get the proceeding word? A lot of time by being intimate with God. You see, there are seasons of God in our lives as kingdom citizens, as God's kingdom people. There are seasons of God in our life. If we keep up with the seasons of God, we will not lack bread for that season. There are times that the Lord will just say, you will know that the Lord is indicating praise in your life. And true praise, as you begin to praise, oh Lord, I give you praise, I give you glory, glory be to your name. And then you're always praising, and then you go, you worship God, you're bowing down to him. Then after you have done that, a word will just come forth, and it will lighten you. Now that word is being stored there, stored there, it's being stored. You see, because it says, whosoever shall say, hallelujah. So that person that is saying it matters. Hallelujah. And the word that he's saying, he matters. The whosoever, what has that whosoever been doing all this while? Because the Jesus was an whosoever who said, and in 24 hours, this thing happened. So if we have been full of God's word, it brings us into that place where we can we are able to speak God's words against this mountain. It's a particular mountain. Whosoever shall say to this mountain, be thou removed, be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart. So I'm trying to act to make you to act to extricate you <laughs> from. Uh, the condemnation that you have doubted because sometimes you're believing God for something and say, oh, you have doubted. Yeah. When those days when you just begin to say, ah, you have doubted. But we know that that's just the condemnation of the enemy. You know? So sometimes your mind may be doubting, but your heart is not doubting. Your mind is full of uh, pictures of what you don't want to happen. In fact, Satan knows how to do that kind, those kinds of pictures. We color it, we animate it to be like cartoon, alive. We bring it alive. Hallelujah. We bring the terrible thing that must happen, that is going to happen, that will happen, that will surely take place. If we bring it up. Praise God. <laughs> but you see, that's different from your heart. That's just images of the mind. It's different from your heart. What does your heart believe? Your heart believes God. Hallelujah. Your heart believes that what God says is going to come to pass, will come to pass. Then he says, therefore, I say to you, what, whatsoever, um, okay, before I go into that place, um, believes that those things, what is, I mean, um, shall not doubt in his heart, but believe that those things he says will come to pass. Yeah, the King of Angels say, whatsoever he saith, I wanted to explain about that, but my translation has already explained it. Those things that he says. So it's not just one that we say. Sometimes we can say it a million times. And then it'll happen. So that we can say it a thousand times. You keep saying it. It's a, it's a battle. You keep saying it's a battle of, of, of words. When Jesus met Satan in the temptation, it was a battle of words. What was going to destroy Israel from their inheritance when God wanted to destroy all of them? It was a battle of words. God said, I have heard in my hearing ten times. It was what they were saying. 
that was going to happen to them. Hallelujah. And there is no, no matter how bad the situation is, you can see and have the mountain removed. Because God did not say, if the situation is bad, then you can begin to look at another thing. Hallelujah. And I was talking about the seasons of God. Let's live our lives according to the divine seasons. Because a lot of times, God prepares us against tribulations. Nobody dying here in the name of Jesus. Amen. We live and not die. We live to declare God's work in the land of living. So, but the things that God takes us through are facilitators of our faith. So that when we face challenges, that faith can rise. Like, like Jesus did not know that he probably was going to face the fig tree that day. But he was living a life in the spirit. So it works better when you are living life in the spirit. But it still works anyhow, whether you are living life in the spirit or not. Because even unbelievers, what whatever they say, they get. You don't know? Even those who don't have the life of God, when they say, when they keep telling their children, Olori Buruku, Olori Buruku, bad head, bad destiny, can never be better for you. They get it, don't they? Mm -hmm. They get it. And those who decree the mercy of God upon their children, what do they, what happens? They get them. Hallelujah. Whosoever shall say to this mountain, be thou removed. I like won't telling the mountain to be removed. But Jesus Christ says, I shall not, but shall believe that whatsoever he says shall come to pass. He shall have whatsoever he says. So it's a continual saying. Keep saying it. You know what happens when you say it to an extent. When you say something, you're actually doing two things. You are meditating and you are releasing power. Whatever you say, he says a man shall be satisfied by the fruit of his lips. Hallelujah. In other words, what you say is a fruit that you eat. You are eating what you are saying. You say, ah, it's my life, self. This is my life. You are not only say, planting things, you are not only establishing things for yourself, you are also educating your heart and mind. You are re-educating. It will get to a point that whatever you say will become the Satan. You will just be looking for Satan to kill and destroy. Because what you have said about yourself, about your healing and health, about your prospering, about the grace of God, about your life, about the fact that you fulfill divine purpose in the earth, what you are saying about it, no devil can take it away from you. Because you are so convinced. That thing has become your life. That's why I say, this word that I speak to you today, they are your life. Speak it when you are lying down. Speak it when you wake up. Speak it when you are in the living room with your children. He said, bind it as a as bracelet on your hand. He said, put it as front length before your eyes. He said, put it in the lintel of your home. Let the word be everywhere. That's what God is saying. You want a life that comes out the way God wants it to come out. The word produces it. What do you believe? Hallelujah. Amen. What do you believe about yourself? If you face a temptation that it looks like you cannot pass, God has, in the seasons of your life, provided, because he always provides ahead of time, necessary spiritual food to tackle it, but maybe you were not paying attention. So when the situation came, no strength, no word, no proceeding word. Because it's just like when I come to church, sometimes I have about two or three messages that are, that are rolling in my heart. Sometimes I even just wait on God, Lord, what do, I want, what do you want me to tell the people? God can now take out of something that, it may be somebody that is playing music, it may be somebody that is leading prayer. It may be somebody, I'll just hear something and it will, it will resound in my spirit. No! And I will know, oh, that's it. That's what the Lord did. That's a sometimes it's a confirmation. Sometimes it's a rema. Sometimes the Lord just 
bring something out. And I, you know, it just come out of my heart like that. I know this is the word for this time. This is the word for this season. Praise God. <laughs> So in that same way also, when we are faced with situations and oppositions, there should be enough resources of heaven in our hearts. Hallelujah. In our spirits. Hallelujah. That would help us. The Lord is good. Can we rise up this morning? And speak something concerning a particular mountain that we face right now. In the name of Jesus. I want you to do that right away. Now because I don't want anybody to hear the word that me I'm speaking. So I'm speaking in tongues. But I don't want you to speak in tongues. Speak against the mountains. Speak against the mountains. Mention them by name and speak God's word against them. Mention them by name and speak God's word against them. Mention them by name and speak God's words against them. Mention them by name and speak God's words against them. Now, uh, we're, we're, we're ending to start another message. Are we offline on Facebook? Okay. So, for, this, for, for my Facebook audience, we're ending right now to start another message, um, which has to do with um, uh, what I've been sharing before um, the best stones of Israel we're, we're going into episode 8 by the grace of God thank you very much <laughs>